This time we begin exploring Big Bend National Park and marvel at the unique vistas and rugged terrain of the Chihuahuan Desert. Well, Texas is cold, Texas is windy. We had about 55 mile an hour wind gusts last night when we were sleeping in Del Rio. It rocked the rig pretty well, but we tried to face into the wind as much as we could. We were kind of parked between some buildings to help cut the wind as well. And we actually stayed hooked up to the truck. I had heard that that helps to stabilize it a bit and it works pretty well. <laughs> I don't know, I think somebody must have fed some birds, some uh, excellent. We, so we got to be sure to get as much solar power as we can, so he's up there cleaning. It's just a really interesting day. <laughs> It took two long days to drive across the vast expanse of West Texas. A trip to Big Bend requires a lot of time on the road. You don't just happen to drop by. Big Bend National Park was established in 1944. It was named after a bend in the Rio Grande River, which creates a natural border between the U.S. and Mexico. The park contains over 800,000 acres, yet it is one of the least visited in the nation. We began our day on the popular Ross Maxwell Scenic Drive that winds its way along the southwestern section of the park. Over a hundred years ago, Sam and Nina Nail, a couple, had a ranch here where they mostly farmed cattle. And they dug a well, put a windmill on it, and it would pump water from the well. And they've long been gone, but the windmill still pumps water. It's just really, really cool. No wind at the moment, but it still keeps the trees and shrubs and all that they planted back here still alive. That's really neat. This is a thorn. Where'd you get it? Well, Mommy took it out of her shoe. <laughs> Watch where you step yeah. at Big Bend National Park. <laughs> Beginning in the 1920s, sheep and goats were raised at the Homer Wilson Ranch. It was abandoned in 1945, but the dry climate has mostly preserved the foreman's house, the bunkhouse, and other remains of the ranch. Well, my first impressions of Big Bend, it's kind of a prickly place. You definitely gotta watch where you put your feet. 
but it's absolutely beautiful. It's very, very different from any place we've ever been. I've never thought that I would be a huge fan of visiting the desert, but it's just, it's wild how so much vegetation can grow here, how it can survive here with so little water. The colors are beautiful. It's just really, really unique. I'm so glad that we have three full days to explore this place. It sure beats being home in Washington right now when it's about 10 below. I'll take the sun today. <laughs> We soaked up the landscape along this solitary drive, stopping at every viewpoint. With scenery like this, it's no wonder that traveling this road is a highlight of the park. What have you got behind you? Mule's ears! Even though the road is a worthwhile destination, it's what's at the end of it that draws so many people here, the Santa Elena Canyon. Here is the famous Rio Grande River, and right there, about uh, 40 feet away, is Mexico. And the day is just awesome. The walls of these cliffs are 1,500 feet high. I don't know if you can capture it, but yeah, tilt up. There you go. <laughs> it's not New Mexico, it's Mexico. <laughs> Old Mexico. At just under two miles round trip, this popular hike into the canyon crosses Terlingua Creek. It only climbs 80 feet in elevation, but it's all right here at the switchbacks. Bamboo in the desert. Who knew? Pandas could for sure live here. <laughs> definitely didn't expect to find anything like this in Texas. <laughs> this canyon is incredible. I can see why it's one of the top attractions in the National Park. We've seen more crowds here than anywhere else, but there's a reason for it. It's absolutely beautiful and it's only what 55 maybe 60 out there but once oh, yeah. you get in the canyon the temperature drops five or ten degrees so it's cool here if you have never planned to come to big bend we highly recommend that you do it we it's... Do. <laughs> we've only been here a day and this has already got to be in our top 10 yeah. this is just a spectacular it's, place it's so different from any other national park that we've been to You have to come here. It's amazing. But did you know there are alligators in the Rio Grande? <laughs> he wants to be free, but no. He's yours. He's mine. <laughs> So it's surprisingly really smooth because when the river rises, it actually erodes away at the rock. It's pretty cool.
am really excited to get to go four wheel driving. We've had the truck now for nearly a year and we haven't really had an opportunity to really do any uh, off-roading kind of stuff. So let's do this. It's a Texas roller coaster. <laughs> I like it. For any of you that have watched our episode when we went to Alaska and we drove the road to McCarthy. <laughs> I think this is a little bit worse in terms of the condition of the road, but my husband is not begging for regular pavement now. He's actually enjoying this it. This is fun. <laughs> it's very different being in a truck versus in a 24 foot motorhome. We're going a lot faster, but it's still pretty rough. <laughs> Near the end of the old Maverick Road is Luna's Hakal, a low dugout shelter used by residents in the early 1900s. Hakals were well suited to the harsh desert environment, with low walls built of local stones and roofs made of ocotillo branches. Gilberto Luna lived here with his wife and nine children, and people think we're crazy for living in an RV. Just outside the park is the old Terlingua ghost town. When large deposits of mercury were discovered in the area in the late 1800s, it grew from a sleepy little village to a booming mining town with over a thousand people. After the mine was exhausted and shut down in the 1940s, the town was abandoned. But the surrounding area has made a comeback in recent decades due to the popularity of the national park and the town's famous chili cook-off. I'm not like Will. I don't have to duck. Show off. <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> you bonked your head like twice already. Some of us are vertically challenged. And some of us just, God made us grow until we're perfect. We just didn't take that long. <laughs> you see what I have to pull it up with every day. <laughs> You're no better. You wanna go for a ride? <laughs> but you know what's crazy? That car, I'm sure, was once someone's pride and joy. And now, it's a pile of rust. Well, the ghost town was really cool, but that is not the reason we came into Terlingua. We're here for some Texas barbecue. <laughs> that is an excellent brisket. Good smoky flavor, and I love the spicy salsa. Mm -hmm. It's got a good tang to it. I love it.
After a wonderfully exhausting day, we took in the late afternoon views of Terlingua. This area is known for being a great place to see the night sky, and the stars were breathtaking. Driving to the Great Vine Hills Trail is a bit rough, but the trail leads to Balanced Rock, one of the more unique sites in the park. degrees but with that bright sun shining on you it feels a whole lot hotter so we decided to be smart right Darda? Yes. Zone. <laughs> You're doing great though. I guess it was worth it. <laughs> you guess? Okay, it was worth it. <laughs> that is awesome. So the balanced rock up at the top of this hike is really cool to see, but the entire hike is amazing. Even if you're a little unsure of yourself through some of the rock climbing and scrambling you have to do to get up to the balanced rock, it's still worthwhile to come in here and do the hike up to uh, the rock scrambling point. It really has a feel for something you would find in one of the Utah parks, something like Capitol Reef or Arches or Bryce Canyon. It's not what you expect to see in Texas. Well, the map may say Grapevine Hills Road is fine for cars, low clearance vehicles. Um, you're risking it if you do it. <laughs> that was definitely a lot bumpier than the old Maverick Road we did yesterday. So just be prepared, obviously, spare tire, um, emergency kit, plenty of water. Yeah, you don't want to have to call a wrecker, one, because there's no cell coverage out there You can't there call at them all. at all. You can't call anyone, and it's going to cost a fortune to get someone out there. So yeah. play yeah. it safe. We're thankful to have the truck. It performed beautifully. I mean, it was a rough ride, but we expected that, and um, we're tired. It's 5.30, which is the latest we've stayed out in a while. So we're going to enjoy the sunset as we head back. Looking forward to a good night's sleep. We'll see you tomorrow. Big Bend is so big that we couldn't fit it all into just one episode. We'll explore another incredible canyon, hike the park's busiest trail in the Chisos Mountains, and take an unexpected trip south of the border. And until next time, enjoy your journey. <laughs>